But Dave always loved to get up to these high overlooks where you could study the landscape laid out before you. And here's where he would correlate things with the geologic texts and point out to his clients the, the whole manner in which the landscape had been created. This photograph was taken near Observation Point on the east rim of Zion Canyon, which is a fairly arduous undertaking to get up there. However, there was an easier way, if you were game for it. There was a fellow from Springdale named Flanagan who had a sawmill up on the east rim. And to get the sawn boards from the rim down to the canyon floor, he had put in a steel cable. And if you were willing, you could sit in this painter's harness, and when a, lo a load of lumber was going down, it would, it kind of a vertical zip line, would take you 2,800 vertical feet up to the east rim. <laughs> and Rust actually used this for some of his clients, if they were willing. He'd send his pack stock up the east rim trail, and they'd take the quick route up to the top. He also liked to explore the Zion Narrows on the North Fork of the Virgin River. It wasn't really known then as a hike, but he'd ride horseback up a little ways and then they'd continue on foot. This is uh, George Fraser's son, George Jr., on their 1914 trip. And they'd explore the side canyon of Orderville Gulch, which is this tremendously narrow, dark canyon where the walls just went up vertically over you. I just like to think how it, how it must have been to be getting into this country when there weren't any guidebooks. Well, Powell had gotten into some of this country, but in a real way, you were kind of exploring as you went along. By uh, about 1920, when um, this boy was taken up on the Aquarius Plateau, Rust had established himself as, I feel, the preeminent guide to the Colorado Plateau north of the Colorado River. There were other folks like John Weatherill operating south of the river and Zeke Johnson out in the Natural Bridges country. But if you wanted to see any of the country from the Kaibab all the way up to the Henry Mountains and beyond, Dave Rust was your man. By 1919, in fact, the Park Service had taken over, and they soon confiscated the Grand Canyon Trail that he had put in in such effort. And not long after, the uh, cable crossing was dismantled, and the first of the two bridges was built down at the Colorado River. This was a major disappointment to Dave, and he, he didn't often return to the Grand Canyon. But in the meantime, a whole new world of guiding had opened up to him. He was taking people into places like Cathedral Valley at the north end of the Water Pocket Fold. This was with a trip with the Frasers that he took in 1915. That's George and George Jr. standing on that outcrop. And you can go to the same place today. It's uh, now a Park Service overlook. But Cathedral Valley didn't even get its name until 1945. Dave knew it from his youth. He'd, he'd heard of sheep up in that country. And, recognized that there were some amazing geological formations there, so, such as these Entrada sandstone towers. Well, he made many more trips with his friend George Fraser and with other clients as well, some of whom were wealthy industrialists from back east or educators, quite a few folks from Utah as well. But he kept coming back to describing Fraser as uh, he said he was the man who taught me much about seeing. He had come to understand that there was a real difference between mere tourism and real in-depth travel, as he called it. That to fully appreciate the country you were going through, you, you had to do more than just snap a few Kodaks and then continue on to the next site. You, you needed to try to understand something of the geology, the geography, the human history, and if possible, try to rub shoulders with the people that were then making their living from the landscape. And they were always running into oh, prospectors, sheep herders. They'd stop into these little villages to resupply and get some food. And in a way, it occurred to me that this was an early form of ecotourism, or what you might call adventure travel. You were learning about the country, you were meeting the people who lived there, 
It was a much more in-depth type of travel experience. And this became Dave Rust's hallmark throughout his career. He once wrote that, and I quote from one of his articles, a genuine traveler has definite objectives. Capacity and training are quite essential. He must be agreeable in society, contented in solitude, enthusiastic and patient as a fisherman. And he'd taken his clients into some of the most fantastic geologic wonders of the West, such as Rainbow Bridge, which he visited in 1916. But uh, it was clear to him that there was more than just monumental scenery. He, he seems to have comprehended the Colorado Plateau as a whole entity, which not many writers at the time were, were doing. One of his big ambitions was to get back to Glen Canyon, which he'd seen as a, as a young placer miner. So in 1923, he bought a couple more of these folding canvas-covered canoes. Uh, a year and a half ago, I had the pleasure of actually seeing these canoes, which are in the Grand Canyon's uh, museum collection up at the South Rim. And he began guiding one or two trips every summer down Glen Canyon. He called it a, a wonder canyon and a wonder river. And he appears to be the first person to be regularly guiding on the Colorado Plateau. This is some years in advance of Norman Neville's. But he also liked, when he was on the river, to take his clients up to the rim. He just loved these panoramic overlooks. Here's a trip in 1939 when a young friend of his from Chicago, they're looking back upriver to uh, Gregory Butte from near the crossing of the Fathers. He, was, um, he had a real interest in human history, and he discovered the actual steps that the Escalante, the Dominguez Escalante expedition, had chiseled into the rock to get down to the Crossing of the Fathers. It's kind of funny because you can read articles 10 years after uh, describing people who had discovered these steps. He'd known about them all along. He also enjoyed visiting the Escalante Canyons. He was guiding trips into there years before it was written up in places like National Geographic. This was known at the time as the Honda Arch in Willow Gulch, as later uh, called Broken Bow Arch. But even though he had lost his Grand Canyon trail project, he, he kept a place in his heart for the Grand Canyon. In 1928, he was invited to return for the dedication of the Grand Canyon Lodge at uh, Bright Angel Point. And I would have liked to have known his feelings then. Uh, he's shown here with his wife, Ruth. He, he must have felt proud for having been in on the ground floor developing tourism at the North Rim. He liked to contrast the North Rim with the more developed facilities at the South Rim. He would tell people that North Rim is mine, pure, clean, and unspoiled. And he maintained a friendship with Emory Cole up until his own death in 1963. This photograph was taken in a visit he made to the South Rim in the late 1940s. Both of them were canyon pioneers, but Dave was far uh, less well known. It was interesting, uh, he wrote to Emory after he returned from this trip. He'd driven all the way back from uh, Flagstaff to his home in Provo at 55 miles an hour in his automobile. And his comment to Emory was, what a waste, you can't see anything at that speed. <laughs> well, he perhaps wasn't well known, I think, because he was ahead of his time. He, he had started off as a booster of tourism, including uh, better roads and highways. But in the end, he, he kind of grew disenchanted with the automobile as a way of seeing places like the Grand Canyon. He once wrote that the importance of speed is exaggerated. Do you rush through an art gallery of masterpieces? It's quite as absurd to race through scenic masterpieces. And his trips, uh, you know, they'd go out for a month, six weeks at a time. They'd spend an entire day at a scenic overlook, such as Toro Lake Pier, just reading everything they could about it, looking at the geologic maps. And I thought 